Well, well, well. If anyone was still doubting or questioning whether or not Disney was really losing money at quite the rate that it was alleged to be, I think this will settle things rather nicely. As a few days ago, Bob Iger had an interview where he talked about the future of Disney and um, the many challenges it was facing, many self-imposed as Bob himself put it. Whilst talking in this interview, he mentioned that the old television channels were no longer perhaps core to Disney's future strategy, something that got a lot of people very, very, very scared. Because of course, the television channels like ABC and National Geographic have long been seen as the, the jewels in Disney's crown, their, um, their claim to seriousness and, uh, how do I put it, their, uh, their ticket to the club, perhaps, shall we say, as the television studios have still been viewed as the... Um, the premier institutions to own if you are entering into the lines of entertainment or news, etc. It brings with it a certain pedigree and gravitas to be television, rather than merely a streaming service or anything like that. The problem is, of course, that streaming and, well, just hell, podcasts, frankly, have been out-competing television now for quite some time, to the point where there are individual news channels on YouTube out-competing the giants like CNN and Fox News, to the point where those then moved onto YouTube. Like, this has been happening for quite some time, but um, in essence, streaming has outcompeted the old media. And for a while, as always happens in these circumstances, the old media clings to their relevance. But this only lasts so long as they actually have the financial muscle to keep closing their fist. And right now, Disney is running out quickly. Bob Iger has made it one of his um, main commitments to reduce Disney's enormous deficit. And one of the ways in which he is going to do that is to sell off the TV assets. Now, this is what I view as the essential straight-up confirmation that that is his plan. Bob Iger moves to calm Disney staff after sparking high anxiety or potential sale of TV assets. So the article here goes on to explain how he was trying to reassure the workers in the television studios that he totally wasn't going to eat them all out the window. The problem is, um, it came across less as a, no, 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 don't worry, we're not going to sell you for food, and more like a, hey, you're a really shiny thing, aren't you? Wouldn't it be fun for other people to own shiny things like you? <laughs> yes. It's um, less of a reassuring speech and more of a sales pitch, really. And again, the only reason why Disney would sell these um, these, these gravitas organizations, these, these pedigrees, the keys to the club, is because they need the cash bad. And they recognize that television is no longer capable of producing the income that they need. As right now, Disney's main source of income is their theme parks, which are of course in turn propped up primarily by their movie industry. You know, the, the likes of Marvel Heroes, for example, has created enormous revenues for the theme parks in the creation of attractions and merchandise around it. Hell, even Star Wars, massive failure though that has been for Disney, has at the very least allowed them to prey to a degree upon people's nostalgia by creating Star Wars-inspired attractions, although the Galactic Star Cruiser proved to be one massive expensive leap too far. <laughs> oh well, oh well. Whereas more traditional uh, programming, like National Geographic, FX, ABC, etc., well, the thing is, it's not that people don't want television. It's not that people don't consume television still. In fact, if anything, we today consume more entertainment than ever before. Like, it's, it is ridiculous the quantity of entertainment we consume, but... It comes in the form of on-demand media. The issue with television is that it's incredibly inconvenient. You want to watch the next episode of a show? Well, you've got to be there in your chair watching the TV at that specific time. Or you've got to record it and then watch it later and so on. Or you could just sit your ass in front of the PC and just go like beep, 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 that one please, and there you go. You can watch an entire series from beginning to end without ever getting up of your fat ass if you so choose. Television doesn't do this. 
and in a match between convenience and inconvenience, <laughs> convenience always wins. Which is why television is going to basically be dead eventually. That's going to take a while, sure, but it will eventually be completely supplanted by, well, just internet, but on a box in your living room. That will probably be the actual replacement. The issue also is that most of the stuff they create for TV is self-contained. They create a thing, and then people watch that thing, and then it kind of moves on. Maybe in the form of a reality show, or a television series, etc, etc. But it doesn't really fuel the kind of growth that streaming does. Meanwhile, if they make another series of The Mandalorians or some Star Wars, Star Wars nonsense, which he does also admit is becoming, becoming a bit old and trite as well, that can turn into merchandise, that can turn into theme park attractions, that can turn into positive PR for Disney, although these days the latter rarely occurs. But in theory, fan favourites should be, you know, fan favourites. And if they could actually make some of those, that'd be a step in the right direction as well. But Disney is, as mentioned, in cost-cutting mode. And in that case, anything that isn't actually, you know, propping up the theme parks right now isn't all that valuable. Especially as he also recognizes that he does need to cut back on the production of Marvel and Disney. Now, I to an extent disagree here a little bit, because he puts it as if they had overloaded the community, like they'd produced too much and stretched their resources too thin across too many shows, and I mean that's true as well. You can certainly see that in the budget and the quality of certain episodes of Andor or The Mandalorian, definitely, but the key concern here isn't actually necessarily like superhero fatigue either, or like if it's Star Wars fatigue, although that... Oh, how do I put this? It isn't that people are sick of Star Wars, it's that people are sick of shit Star Wars. Yes. Yes, that's rather brilliantly put if I may say so myself. Good entertainment always has a home, almost universally. Whereas bad entertainment will only turn people yet further off the entire, well, franchise and form of entertainment that it exists in. Now this is also something that Bob Iger does to at least a degree understand, as in the early earnings call that happened, what, a couple of months ago now? He admitted that certain programming was not, as he put it, driving subscriber growth, which means it was enormous flops and nobody actually bothered watching it, which is also why he then moved in to curate and slice and dice like mad out a lot of the programming, mostly of a woke nature, interestingly enough, out of Disney Plus. That isn't topic in and of itself because, well, that's the thing in the digital age. Say that you actually liked one of those series, if you were, for example, a brain damaged goldfish with severe oxygen deprivation, for example, you might want to keep watching that series. And hey, who am I to judge? But since it's a digital product and it's no longer on the digital platform, well, you are shit out of luck. Unless, of course, you can go to some of the less reputable sites on the internet to acquire a more permanent copy. But we shan't get into the digital versus physical argument here because uh, that's probably been covered at length other places already. But we are probably, as I've said already, going to start seeing a bit more of a pivot towards well, the right, frankly, and more traditional entertainment. It's going to take a while because none of the programs currently in planning is that. The Acolyte seems like a full-on crazy woke fest at the moment. But with the failure of Indiana Jones, with the failure of many Star Wars shows to live up to the hype and the reputation, etc. And the fact that most people tend to praise the non-Star Wars parts of Star Wars... <laughs> seems to indicate that the overall formula is flawed. And love him or hate him, there's a lot of people with very strong opinions about Bob here, but he does have a tendency to see which way the wheel is turning. And in this case, he is apparently willing to make some rather large concessions within the TV branch to keep everything else alive. And that would be utterly pointless if he then continued to double down on what is already failing. It would be a truly 
retarded decision to sell off your television branches only to focus yet further on the things that you yourself agree doesn't actually drive growth. I mean, at some point, you've got to think that people will have a, a smidgen, a, a fraction, a grain of self-preservation within their bodies, right? Oh, let's get to, well, I guess we'll see if my optimistic estimates on that particular note will prove to be correct. But I do view this as probably yet another step in Disney refocusing their efforts towards a very different type of entertainment. Or, alternatively, crashing and burning into the ground. Either way, I'll be quite happy with the results. <laughs> ah, dare to imagine a world without a Disney. <laughs> Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.